meet Ravi. He is a marketing executive in a company. Ravi has applied for a job in an overseas company. Why did he do so? Development is not just about setting a goal for our betterment. This is because Ravi wants growth and development in his career and a better income. But also about how to achieve that goal. What's true for Ravi is true for most people. Farmers, laborers, professionals, businessmen, all want more income in life. Ravi got the job he wanted at a much higher income. However, Ravi is now thinking of some other goals that matter besides a higher income. Let's see what he's thinking about. Ravi is now thinking what kind of facilities will be there for his family. Will he be happy without his close friends and colleagues? Will he get equal treatment and security at the new place? Will he get respect and freedom in the new work environment? Will he get opportunities to improve his skills through learning and training? While income is important, there are other developmental goals that are also important to people. Thus, people have a mix of goals for development. Amongst these developmental goals, income is measurable in terms of money. The other goals are not measurable. The non-measurable developmental goals in life are equally and sometimes even more important than the measurable developmental goals like income. Non-measurable developmental goals like respect, security and equality are more important than income when it comes to working women and encouraging more women to work outside their homes. Development is not just about setting a goal for our betterment, but also about how to achieve that goal. Now let us see what kind of developmental goals people have. Let us take some examples. For example, a casual laborer may think having more job security is development. A child laborer may wish for education and better nourishment. An urban office employee may think better pay, promotion, and more luxury in life is development. An industrialist may wish for cheaper power, lower taxes and more profit. A girl child may want equal opportunities of education and career development as her brother for development. Thus we see that different people have different developmental goals depending on their social, educational and financial status. Do all the people have the same perception of development? Let us understand through some examples. When the government raises the procurement prices of food grains, a farmer would consider it as development as it raises his income. However, a consumer may not agree as this would raise the prices of food grains in the markets. Similarly, when it comes to clearing forests to expand cities, some people may call it development as we need more land to build homes and industries. However, environmentalists and tribals whose livelihood depends on forests may not agree. Thus, we see that what is development for some may not be development for others. Before we talk about comparing national development, let us see how people compare things. Let us take the simple example of comparing different means of transport to find the best way to travel from Delhi to Mumbai. As you can see, different people have different opinions when it comes to comparing things. How do we arrive at a consensus? Let us try and revise our question. 
Let us see what people think when we ask them about the most economical way to travel from Delhi to Mumbai. Given the criteria of economy, people seem to agree that a train is the most economical way to travel from Delhi to Mumbai. Let us change this criterion and see what happens. Let us see what people think when we ask them about the fastest way to travel to reach Mumbai from Delhi. Given the criterion of speed, people agree that a flight is the quickest way to travel from Delhi to Mumbai. Thus, we see that it is easier to compare things when we compare them using a particular criterion or characteristic. People also have different opinions when comparing national development in different countries. For example, a person in the USA may think that his country is more developed based on the criteria of wealth and industrialization. However, a person from India may think her country is more developed based on the criteria of ancient traditions and cultural heritage. No criterion is more important than another. However, we need a globally accepted criterion to compare development in different countries. And that criterion is money or national income. More income allows people to buy more of the things they require for their development. Therefore, countries with more income are considered more developed than other countries that have less income. The income of a country is the sum of the incomes of its entire population. Different countries of the world have different populations. Thus, a country A with a large population and low incomes may have a greater total income than a country B with a small population and higher incomes. Though, in reality, the people in country B may be more prosperous than the people in country A. Thus, total income is not a reliable criterion to compare national development. A more reliable criterion for comparing national development is the average income given by the total income of a country divided by its population. The average income of a country is also known as its per capita income. The World Bank published a World Development Report in 2004 that classified countries with a per capita income of more than 4,53,000 rupees as rich countries or developed countries. And countries with a per capita income of 37,000 rupees or less as low income countries. India, with a per capita income of 28,000 rupees per annum, was in the category of low income countries. Consider a country A with a population of 5 people who have similar incomes. The average per capita income for country A is 8,420. Now, consider a country B with a population of 5 people, where one person has a much higher income than the other four. The average per capita income for country B is also 8,420. Note that the large income disparity in country B is not reflected in its per capita or average income, which is the same as country A. In other words, country A has less inequality in the distribution of income than that of B, whereas country B has no equitable distribution of income and has rich and poor people. Hence, it can be said that per capita income as a criterion of development is not without limitations. As discussed before, people have many different developmental goals other than income. Similarly, several criteria other than per capita income are used to evaluate the economic development in different countries or different states in India. Let's take an example. Here's a graph that shows the per capita income in three states of India. 
Punjab, with the highest per capita income, may be considered the most developed state in this group. Now, let us use some other criteria to compare the development in these states. This graph shows comparative figures of infant mortality rate or the number of children that die before the age of 1 per 1,000 live births in a year. The infant mortality rate is the lowest in Kerala. This indicates better medical and child care facilities. Thus, based on this criterion, Kerala appears more developed than Punjab. Next, let us compare the literacy rates or the percentage of population above the age of 7 that is literate in these states. Kerala has the highest literacy rate. Thus, based on this criterion, it appears more developed than Punjab. Did you know? The district with the highest literacy rate in India is Aizol in Mizoram and the district with the lowest literacy rate is Dantewada in the state of Chhattisgarh. Let us also compare the net attendance ratio or the percentage of children in the age group of 6 to 10 years who attend school in these states. Kerala has the highest net attendance ratio. Thus, based on this criterion also, it appears more developed than Punjab. Thus, we see that while Punjab has the highest per capita income, Kerala is more developed in terms of other criteria like the infant mortality rate, literacy rate and net attendance ratio. This brings us to the conclusion that higher income alone cannot bring about development. Hence. Besides employment opportunities to generate more income, a community also needs public facilities for education and training, affordable health care and provision for adequate food and nutrition for development. An interesting do-it-yourself way to find your health status is to find your body mass index. To calculate your body mass index, first measure your weight in kilograms. Suppose your weight is 45 kilograms. Next, measure your height in meters. Suppose your height is 150 centimeters or 1.5 meters. Your body mass index is equal to your weight in kilograms divided by the square of your height in meters. Thus, with these figures, your body mass index will be 20. You can find your current health status by referring to the BMI indicator table shown here. The United Nations Development Program periodically publishes a human development report that compares different countries on several criteria like per capita income, literacy, and health status. According to the 2004 Human Development Report, the per capita income in Sri Lanka was higher than in India and its other neighboring countries. Sri Lanka is ahead of India in other developmental criteria also, like life expectancy, literacy rate, and gross enrollment ratio of children in school. UNDP also prepares a list of countries based on their Human Development Index. A higher rank on the Human Development Index list indicates less development and poorer quality of life. As you can see, Sri Lanka is way above India on the Human Development Index list. Did you know? In the UNDP's Human Development Report 2008-2009, India's Human Development Index rank has come further down to 134. 
Note that countries like Nepal and Bangladesh, with far less per capita income than India, are not far behind us in life expectancy and gross enrollment ratio. This emphasizes the need for us to improve our performance on other criteria of development besides income. Availability of resources and an idea for the productive use of the available resources leads to development. As more and more development happens, more and more resources get used up. Let us understand this through a few examples. Increase in cultivation is an indicator of development. However, as cultivation increases, more and more resources like groundwater get used up. Increase in industrialization also indicates development. However, increase in the number of industries leads to increased use of natural resources like ores and minerals. Similarly, increase in the number of personal and commercial vehicles is also part of development. However, increase in the number of vehicles is leading to more demand for fuel and thus faster depletion of limited petroleum resources. The resources used for development may be renewable resources like groundwater or non-renewable resources like ores and minerals including petroleum. We have limited stocks of non-renewable resources that are lost forever once used. The charts here show the available stocks of crude oil and the number of years they will last at their present rate of usage. This brings us to the question, how will we continue with industrial and transport development when we have no minerals and petroleum left? Renewable resources like groundwater get replenished by nature over a period of time. However, if we use groundwater faster than what nature can restore, we run the risk of facing a scarcity of groundwater. Here are some worrisome facts about the overuse of groundwater in India, especially in the agricultural regions of Punjab, western Uttar Pradesh, and the coastal plains, and rapidly expanding urban areas. Did you know Groundwater makes up for more than 95% of all the unfrozen fresh water available on the earth. Thus, if groundwater becomes scarce, there will be a severe shortage of water for our personal, agricultural and industrial use. If development continues at its present pace, there may be a time in future when we may run out of resources leading to a situation where no more development will be possible. This is where the concept of sustainability of development comes in. Sustainability of development involves finding ways for continuous development without the risk of running out of resources or causing irreparable damage to the environment. Sustainability of development involves more efficient use of our existing resources exploration to find fresh reserves of resources and coming up with innovative ideas and technology to use new resources in place of conventional ones. Sustainability of development is now a global concern because the future of mankind in all regions of the world depends on it.